Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to take a look at bench heights. What is the actual correct height for a bench? Not just what I think or what someone else thinks or what someone else feels, but actual numbers behind it. We're going to look at some data on a spreadsheet. Let's dive in. I did a video recently about bench heights and what are different ideas from hand spans to chest height to knuckles height to a bunch of other things. And I really wanted to find out what do people actually do, not just what I feel or what other gurus might feel, but what is the reality of it. So I did what anyone building a spreadsheet would do. I took a poll and asked you, uh, how tall are you? How tall is your bench? And how much do you like it? And that actually provided some very interesting data. So today we're gonna go over to the computer and actually take a look at the numbers and see if we can draw some conclusions on what is the official approved correct bench height. So welcome over here to my computer and here is the data. I'll have a link to this sheet down below so you can see it, uh, as well as the form if you wish to add more to it. Uh, but we have a, a pretty decent selection. I would like to make it bigger, as any scientist would love, you would love to have a larger sample size, but today this is what we have. We have about 400 people, um, all of them listing how tall they are. And then we have it in centimeters and inches and how tall their bench is and what their rating is. We also added in options for people with Roman benches and Japanese benches and other things that aren't normal. But So you can see a few of those in there. Uh, Roman benches aren't very common, but uh, they do exist. And there are some people with short benches and some people with really, really tall benches. Um, and some people with Japanese benches. So all that kind of comes over here into these two graphs. We have the centimeters over here and we have the inches over here. Down here we have a chart of how many people responded. So the taller this line is, the stronger that data is. It's more sample sizes. So basically anything like 66 inches tall to 77 inches tall, um, that range, we have a good amount of data. So 66 to 78 to 77, somewhere in that range. You see this actual pretty nice line trending through here. And that continues on up into the higher numbers. But the really interesting one to me was when we got actually smaller than this, um, 64 inches and under, they go up to these higher benches. And um, that was very, very surprising to me. I really expected to see a straight line from one to the other, but somewhere around five foot five, um, bench heights go back up and tend to be a little jagged. Now this area here, we don't have a whole lot of data. Some of these will only have two or three people who are that height um, who put a bench in there. But my expectation is that people in this height are just used to using other benches. And once you get used to a bench height, um, you get used to it. And they don't have to be perfect. You can work on just about any bench. It may not be comfortable, but if you don't know the difference, or if you're just used to working at that height, then that bench may be it. The other really interesting piece of data is this line here. If you draw a straight line on here and you look at this graph, it is almost exactly 50%. In other words, a bench height is 50% of the, how tall the person is. Almost every single one of these are spot on 50% of how tall the person is. And that was, I personally found that to be very interesting. I kind of expected the number to be somewhere around 0.45, but it ended up being almost always 0.50. Uh, yeah, 50% of your height is the average height of a bench. That's really kind of simple. Now, it, it's not dead on, and there is some variance, and some people like the bench to be slightly lower, and some people like to be slightly higher. But if you're looking for where should I start, 50%, go with half of your height. But we did have some other data to look at down here. If we scroll down a little farther, we can see a count of how tall your bench is. So what is the average height of the workbench? Uh, in other words, if you just put in simple bench heights, you have a really nice bell curve topping out right around 36 inches. So if you're an average person, making a bench at 36 inches is pretty standard. Uh, you do see a little bit of a dip on the odd numbers. So people tend to make a bench at even inches, um, which is kind of interesting as well. But yeah, right around 36 inches is average. Then the last piece of data down here is how much do you actually like your bench? One, two, three, four, or five. And overwhelmingly, people like their bench. It's kind of one of those things, if you get used to a particular bench at a particular height, you're probably going to like that height. Um, so, hmm, interesting. But then you see this graph right here, and it really makes me wonder, what would happen if you just took the threes, the people who really, really love their bench, it wasn't too tall, it wasn't too short, what would happen if you just looked at their data? And we have that down here, just the ratings of three. So we can pull this up, and uh, in this we have the chart, so only people with threes get over here. And on this one, you have them by their personal height, and in here you have every 
uh, so this is every single reference on here. Um, not really a great chart, but this does show that you can see a lot of outlying numbers in here. But the interesting one was to come over here. So these are just the people who marked three. And with the exception of these two outliers, you have a really nice straight line running around this. And if you run that straight line on there, it's an average of half the height of the person is the bench height. So of the people who rated three, on average, it's half the height of the person. That's really kind of fascinating to me. So this brings us back to the bench. If you are starting out, what height should you make your bench? And in all honesty, there isn't a specific height. I think the 50% the rule is actually a pretty good one. And by the numbers, that actually looks really good. Other people will say, by the hand span, you should have four of your hand spans high. And mathematically, it's usually eight hand spans is your height. So four hand spans would be half your height. Uh, other people will say, put your hand straight down and flatten it out, and that should be the height of your bench. And that's usually right about half your height. Um, almost all of these metrics of finding what your perfect height bench is, is usually right about half. Give or take two inches, and you're pretty good. And generally, whatever you learn on is what you're going to like, because that's the way your body learns to work. Does it make it perfect? No, there, there is no perfect bench. When you're planing, it's a little better for the plane to be lower. When you're doing joinery and sawing, it's a little better for it to be higher. So you kind of play with split the difference. Are you gonna be doing more of one or the other? That means make the bench a little lower, make the bench a little higher. Try out different things and experiment. There is no perfect bench height, but if you go by the numbers, half of your height is how tall you should make your bench. If you would like to add to the data, I'll leave a link to the form down below as well as a link to the spreadsheet so you can dig through the data and see if there's anything interesting that pops out to you. It is a very simple collection of data, but it was very surprising to me to see that it comes out at 0 0.05 on every height that I had a significant number for, which is kind of interesting. From the last video, I heard hundreds of from the last video, I heard dozens of different ways of, of measuring out what would be the perfect bench height for you, uh, but none of them said 50% you know, of your height. Um, I think that's kind of simple and, and fun. So I hope you like the data. If you do like it, please let me know down below. If you like things like this, let me know that as well. Anytime you do comment down below, if you hit that little like button down there, those things do help out. Thank you. I really, I, I say this every week, but that means a lot. So thank you. Like, comment, share, subscribe. That helps the channel and gets us in front of more people and helps us to grow. Thank you. As well as all those people over there. They are my favorite people of the day. They are the patrons on Patreon. They are the ones who keep this channel going. Without patrons, we wouldn't be here. We are completely sponsored by you, the viewer, and we can do these things because uh, people like that. So if you do, then think about becoming a patron or a member here on YouTube and clicking the join button down below. We have special perks for both, and we do behind the scenes and other things like that. And if you'd like to find out more, well, you know what to do. Click the join button, links in the description, and that'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. There's something very satisfying about taking an item that people argue about and making a spreadsheet that answers the question. It doesn't solve the argument, but it's still fun.